the young man getting set to embark on his NFL journey, and he may not have a very long night as expected. Um, when the NFL draft goes down on April 23rd, he is, uh, based on all the evaluators, the top prospect at the offensive line protector position. He is Jedrick Wills of Alabama. How are you, Jedrick? I'm good. Um, I appreciate y'all having me on the show. No, a pleasure. I appreciate it. I know you were supposed to be on last week, but uh, an NFL team said uh, that your presence was requested, and normally that would piss me off, but I understand. I totally understand. Correct, and uh, my apologies for that. No, yeah, stop. I had, I had one of the NFL team. Come on now. You're trying to get a job here, and somebody's knocking on the door, and it's a potential employer. Of course you're going to go uh, speak to them. How many of these conversations have you had at this point? Um, there's been a lot. Um, I don't know how many to count on hand, uh, but there's definitely been a lot, and most of them have been like the top of the draft. So it's, it's been a fun process so far. So what do they want to know from you? Uh, really just on the above, uh, background checks, um, questions about left tackle, which really come pretty often. A um, whole bunch of film study, uh, playbook recall, about an hour or so FaceTime and Zoom interviews. Okay. And have any uh, head coaches been on this or just position coaches? Um, a little bit of both. I think more head, more head coaches to come in the future um, along with a couple GMs. Okay. So you say top of the draft. Are you saying everybody one through five? We're talking Cincy, Washington, um, the Lions, Giants, Dolphins, have those teams spoken to you? Have I have I named them? Uh, a couple. Okay, all right. You know, I'm just you know I'm trying to. You want to just tell me? Why don't you just tell? Why don't you just tell me the name of the teams that you've you spoken to? No, I'm trying to keep it confidential, but you you hit a few on the head. Okay, very good. So what are they? What do these teams get if they're going to call your name, Jedrick Wills? What are they going to get? Um, I think they're getting the best offer to tackle in the draft. Uh, I'm going to bring competitive attitude and leadership aspect to the table day in and day out. Um, they're going to get a hard worker, um, and like I said, a competitor, uh, somebody with a good football IQ and with the aggressive intentions to go with it. Who is, the, who is the first one to say you should play football? Um, it was mom. I think I was around six or seven, and at that time I was probably like two times the size of a normal six or seven-year-old. She's coming through, through me out there in some pads, and uh, I've loved it ever since. Okay, so your mom, your mom was the first one to put you in pads and say, let's go to work? Is that right? Yeah, crazy, right? Mom threw me out there in the, in the most dangerous sport in the world. <laughs> but she saw something in you. Uh, what was she feeding you that you were two times the size of a six-year-old? Um, I don't recall too much, but if I'd had to guess, it would probably be anything I wanted at the time. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, 50540, and then your, your vert, your broad was quite something else. I mean, all of it, soup to nuts. Um, who was the best um, that you played against at Alabama? somebody that might be in the draft, somebody that might be coming down. Who was the one that was your biggest challenge at the collegiate level, Jedi? Right. Well, Dan and down in practice, I had to go against Raekwon Davis, um, who had arms longer than mine, which I rarely see uh, playing in the SEC. He's a, a freakish athlete. Then I went against Anthony Jennings and Terrell Lewis on the edge. So that was day, out, day in and day out competition. Uh, those guys were in the draft as well. Um, really good players, really good competitors. But overall, throughout the season, I saw a lot of different talent um, being the SEC. Um, Derek Brown was a really good player from Auburn. Um, interior D lineman gave us some problems. It was somebody that we had to recognize who was on the field at all times. And then I saw Javon Kinlaw, who played at South Carolina, another really good player. Um, he's dominant within his box. Um, Clayvon Chason, who's an edge rusher from LSU. And then um, the one who probably – made me pay attention to the most was probably Josh Uche from Michigan, who I, who I mentioned in one of my interviews at the Combine as well. Oh, is that right? Was he the, was he the smartest guy that you played against, Jedrick? Um, I would say so. He had a counter move for just about everything that, that we threw at him. Um, me and him had a really good matchup in the game, but it was more just like watching him on film throughout the season because we played them in, in game 13. So we got to go back and watch all 12 of their games and – the the stuff that he put on tape was uh was pretty was pretty eye opening. Okay, very good. Pound the table for a Michigan Wolverine. Now, I went to Michigan, uh, Jedrick. That's why I followed <laughs> up with see if he was the smartest one you played against. Uh, I see. They they were in one of my top schools when I was coming out of high school. I really enjoyed Michigan. Okay, yeah, no. Until you actually had to play him in a bowl game, then not then maybe right. that's where you really enjoyed it. Right. Yeah, you ruined that. Was that, that was the way my 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 New Year's Day wasn't <laughs> wasn't very happy because of all that. But let's talk a little bit. Let's talk a little bit about the guys that you protected in your 
in your career. What, what when did uh, when did you realize Tua might be special, Jedrick? Um, if I'm gonna be honest, I knew Tua was special since actually high school. Um, coming out of high school, we were in the same class, 2017 uh, class for Alabama. And I was actually, the first time I saw two in person was at the opening. Um, it was our senior year of high school. And we were out to Eugene, Oregon for the opening spark combine. And um, at the time, I don't I don't recall if he was the top quarterback in the class. I know he was like maybe like the number one dual threat, but he wasn't like the very top of the charts. And uh, they had like the seven on seven turn that going on there. And he was lighting everybody up. It was actually it was actually pretty fascinating to watch him being a left-handed quarterback. There wasn't too many of those and so on and so forth. But um, his talent level has always been there. Everybody didn't really notice it until he came in in 2017 and won us a national championship um, versus Georgia. But um, practicing day in and day out with him when I was a freshman and then leading up until then, um, he's always been always been been there with the talent and everything that he has to bring to the table. Well, I mean, and, and you know, you've just brought something up that's very interesting, a left-handed quarterback. I mean, and we were all marveling about how Tua came in at halftime of that national championship game and what he did. I mean, how did that affect you on the line? Hey, halftime, here we go. Here comes Tua. Now suddenly your flip, your air, protections are flipping. I mean, he's a left-hander. That's a totally different ball of wax, is it not? Um, It is, most definitely. And being on the right side and him being actually the blind side quarterback is something that you have to take into account. Um, But it's nothing that I pay too much attention to and get wrapped up in because I feel like no matter what side of the line you're playing on, you have to protect no matter what. Right. There will be differences in slides and – um man protections and people who are manned up on the backside and people who are sliding away and things like that. So that's where that awareness aspect comes into. But I feel like at the end of the day, you just have the ball no matter what. And with him being a left-handed quarterback, it's just special, um, special for him. And obviously, again, you just, Jedrick Wills here on the Rich Eisen Show, you just gave voice to an offensive lineman's mantra, which is the quarterback, no matter who it is, I'm protecting that guy. And I'm going to go into the figurative foxhole with that guy. And, <laughs> And have that mentality, and then the, you know that. So Jalen Hurts was that guy uh, until we all saw what happened with Tua. Um, give me a front row seat as to how he handled his business and what that means for his next level. I chatted with him last week. I I, I think nothing but the highest regard of him. What was it like for you to be right in the middle of all that, Jedrick? Um, we're, we're speaking on Jalen, correct? Yes, sir. Um, Jalen was a leader since day one. Uh, like you said, when I got there. And he was the main guy. I feel like he was always the guy. Um, even after Tua went in and did what he did and then ended up taking the starting job, um, Jaden was still a leader. Um, he was still there day in and day out working and improving his game, um, just trying to be a better quarterback. He never once, like, changed his personality or changed the way that he came to practice or game day. Um, he was always there just being that, that leader that he always has been. Yeah, I, I, I just thought so highly of, of how he handled his business and, and how successful he was at Oklahoma and, and what that means for his his next level, Jedrick, right? I mean, uh, Correct. what was it? So, all right, let me just ask um, you, say that again? No, I was going to say I agree with you, Correct. I feel like that, that situation did nothing but make him a better player. And as you can see, like you mentioned, he went to Oklahoma and handled business. So, um, so short of, I'm sure, what was his goal is to be a national championship, right. which I thought he was capable of. He's a national championship quarterback, leading Alabama to two of them. Um, but it'll do nothing but make him better, and I feel like he's improved his game a whole lot. He's been grinding day in and day out to, like you said, when he gets to the next level, to have that chip on his shoulder and come in and show that he will be an NFL quarterback. Hey, man, he ran one from 30 yards in against Clemson's defense to put uh, Alabama up with two minutes to go in that game. I mean, he. Correct. I mean, he we'd be talking about that for for years had 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 the result been differently, and that's, you know, I, I guess again, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing everybody's career how it all works out with you and everyone else. In the few minutes I have left with you, I've been asking uh, all the Alabama prospects the same question: of when's what's the angriest they've ever seen Nick Saban, or or, or they made him the angriest they've ever made him. Uh, Tua said it was taking that sack in the national championship game, and then kind of. Uh, saying after the game when Saban brought it up, kind of giving him a how do you like me now with that throw. That was one. Um, (laughs) Jerry Judy last week said it was somebody, uh, I guess, on the staff gave him the wrong size hat during um, – straw hat during uh, during a a work – a training camp workout. Um, (laughs) That sounds about right. Okay, sounds about right. So so what what would your answer be to that question, Jedrick? Um, I would say I probably have two. So like you just mentioned with the straw hat, uh, there was one day in fall camp, I believe it was last year, um, we had came out for, for training camp. It was like 110 degrees. 
Um, Coach Saban's out there doing what he does, you know, calling everybody around and screaming and yelling to get us, get us going. But I think I remember them. He had some old tennis shoes that he wore. He's had them for probably a couple of years. Um, very broken, and they had actually threw away his old ones and got him the same pair, but they were a new pair. And when I tell you that he did not like that one bit. <laughs> It was it was like a volcano erupted on the field. Um, no kidding. So are they like his magic shoes, or is he is he superstitious about uh, the shoes? Or I don't know. I don't know if he's superstitious if they're magic or if they just fit well. But that is not a, a person's shoes that I want to mess with. Yeah, I mean, you'd think you'd have to give okay. It like, hey, we're we're thinking of switching your shoes before you do that, right? I mean. Right. I can understand that. But it was nothing. You never blew a protection or anything like that. No offense to ask. Uh, so, but. Yeah, it's not. So that'd be my second story. I remember we were playing Oklahoma last year in the bowl game. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was a play. Um, I think it was in the third quarter. We were up by probably like two or three touchdowns at this point, um, dominating the game. And so we had we're like a, a third and short situation. Um, Damian Harris, who was the running back at the time, he had mm-hmm. got a false start one play. Uh, came back the next play. I had got a false start. I remember this. Um, then they came back the third play. At this point, it's probably like third and 27. <laughs> um, and then they had gave me an illegal formation and said that my, my helmet was behind the center. So it was three penalties back to back to back. And I had got two of them. <laughs> and um, the headset ended up in shambles. <laughs> a, a sh- in shambles headset, huh? So he, he slammed it on the ground. I, I'm not sure if he jumped on it or kicked it, but it like <laughs> so, so what are you thinking when you're seeing that from the field? Um, uh, I just kind of peeped that out of my left eye and uh, just went back to went back to facing straight ahead, looking down the field, waiting for the next play to come in. Um, just try to kind of ignore it because I knew that as soon as I came off the field, I was going to get it. <laughs> and you did. So I, think, uh, I think we ended up scoring on that drive. So I think everything ended up being okay. Oh, okay, very good. Very good. All right. And then last one for you, getting asked a lot of questions, I'm sure, about uh, things uh, um, from your life or maybe social media and what this means or that means. So here's mine. Um, your your photograph for your Twitter avatar, uh, Jedrick, is a fascinating photograph. Um, it <laughs> looks like um, you're in mid sort of, what is that, um, noodle eating? It's your fountain, your mouth is full. What, what is this uh, <laughs> photograph? Tell me the history of this. I was in mid eating of, of eating fettuccine alfredo. I was actually okay. at the draft when that picture was taken. Um, it was a day after we had finished informal interviews, and I had ran over to my uh, draft suite okay. to get some stretching and a recovery, um, a little on field 40 workout, things like that. Um, so the, you're, you're talking the combine? You t- you're talking about the combine? or? Correct. Okay. Combine, yes, sir. Okay. So this That's is taken in Indianapolis. It looks like. Uh, right. Okay. So. And I had about I had about ten minutes I think to to eat, to get my carbs in, um, mm-hmm. get some fruit in, mm-hmm. um, get hydrated, and then head back over before we had more meetings. Had to drink pickle juice and everything. So I just kind of shoved everything into my mouth. Yep. Everybody thought it was hilarious, and I turned around. and I had the camera on me. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> I just posed, got the picture. I just thought it was pretty cool. So that's why I threw it in my okay in my AVI. So this is representative of, of what about you, Jedrick? What window does this um, give me about like, who you I are? I like to eat. Okay. I like to eat. Okay, you like to eat. Uh, have fun and just, just go for it, essentially. Correct. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. All at once. All you can eat. Jedrick Wills. A, pers- a personality pick. I'll put it that way. <laughs> well, I look forward to seeing where you go. Um, a lot of folks from New York City would love to see you protect Daniel Jones. Jedrick, you hearing the same thing? Um, I've heard a little bit of that in... No, no matter who picks me, I'll be happy to be there, and they'll, they'll get everything I have to bring to the table. A full plate, right? They'll get the full yes, plate. Sir. Okay, very good. Full plate. You take care of yourself, Jedrick. Thanks for the call. Yes, sir. We'll do, and I appreciate y'all for having me. Of course. Good luck to you, Jedrick Wills.